Isolated power supplies deliver added safety and noise reduction through the use of special transformers and components. This type of supply carries tested isolation ratings. The first line of defense for isolated power supplies is the input transformer. Although all transformers provide a degree of electrical insulation due to the physical separation of the primary and secondary windings, they are considered non-isolated when they do not carry a documented isolation rating. Some non-isolated transformers use internal grounding between the windings, which makes isolation impossible. Isolated transformers have additional electrical shielding materials for superior protection of the downline circuitry and the user in the event of accidental contact. Choosing the right transformer is a great start for effective isolation. One of three main types of isolated grounding methods must be used. Chassis or earth grounds are often used for electrical safety. They do not conduct current unless a circuit fault has occurred. This type of ground is effective for protecting circuit boards from surges and electrical noise and shields against ambient EMI. Grounding the input side of the power supply transformer is primary grounding. An earth ground connection in AC circuits is often present for additional protection. Isolation resistance is measured between the grounded primary input and a zero-volt reference point of the secondary circuit or ground plane of a printed circuit board. Grounding the output side of an isolation transformer is secondary grounding and is used to reduce noise in power to ground reference changes. A safety capacitor placed between isolated grounds suppresses oscillations and minimizes EMI. A capacitor that meets specifications established by the Electrical Insulation Conference, or EIC, are referred to as Class Y type. Switch mode supplies use a feedback loop to facilitate voltage regulation. In an isolated switch mode supply, feedback loop isolation is often accomplished using an opto-isolator. These devices use light rather than physical connections to communicate information back to the regulation circuits. To be classified as an isolated power supply, resistive and high voltage tests are used to determine a rating or level of isolation. Resistive isolation or insulation resistance testing measures the total resistance between any two points separated by electrical insulation. Under AC or DC high voltage situations, current leakage across the isolation barrier may cause circuit damage. A high potential test measures a barrier's ability to block short-term leakage currents. The test voltage applied is often double that of the safety voltage, plus 1,000 volts. And for medical applications, there are even more things to consider. Learn more at this link. Some circuits are designed to manage a wide range of voltages without risk of damage. Isolation provides certified levels of safety and protection. Let's recap the aspects to consider when choosing isolated or non-isolated power supplies. Isolated. Certified levels of circuit protection. Connected device protection. User protection. Higher cost. Non-isolated. Less complicated design more compact, less expensive. Isolation rating is one of many key factors to consider when choosing a power supply for a product or project. DigiKey's inventory of power supplies have detailed data sheets to help explore options and learn more about the methods and levels of isolation and protection.